I don't really have the superpowers. I pretended to be El Magnifico because I felt like you loved Ultra Lord more than me. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 saddest cartoon episodes. What is he doing? He's protecting us. I am a ninjroid, and ninja never quit. For this list, we're looking at the most heart-wrenching episodes from animated series. We will be excluding anime, as that is a list for another day. Please note, a spoiler warning is now in effect. Which of these episodes left you emotionally devastated? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. The Wedding Squanchers – Rick and Morty If we come back to Earth, can my family have a normal life? Whether transforming the protagonist into a pickle or channel surfing, this Adult Swim cartoon tends to be more concerned with eliciting a laugh than a tear. An alcoholic mad scientist on the run from the Galactic Federation, Rick repeatedly and unapologetically drags the rest of the family, particularly Morty, into all kinds of troublesome situations. In the season 2 finale, the Smiths are forced to go on the lam due to the scientist's notoriety. In an uncharacteristically selfless move, Rick surrenders to the Galactic Federation in exchange for the family's freedom. It would appear that there is a heart underneath all those burbs and insults. Number 19. Epilogue – Justice League Unlimited Could you stay with me? I'm scared. It's a sign of a great series when the demise of a minor character, who only appears in three episodes, succeeds in coming across as tragic. Ace is a powerful psychic capable of warping reality. As a child, the metahuman was subjected to governmental experimentation and ended up temporarily working for the Joker. Aware death is just around the corner due to an aneurysm, Ace's final hours are spent with Batman, arguably the only person to ever treat the psychic as a human being rather than a weapon. He sat with her until her time came. Number 18. Remembrance of Courage Past – Courage the Cowardly Dog Baby, you're supposed to catch the ball! Talk about finishing a series on a gut punch. Courage the Cowardly Dog is constantly creepy, frequently darkly comical, and occasionally deeply moving. While some other segments are sad, nothing comes close to the flashback revealing how Courage meets Muriel. As a puppy, Courage basically witnesses the murder of his own parents at the hands of plausibly the worst cartoon veterinarian ever. Thankfully, the episode's conclusion is quite cathartic, but there's no forgetting the image of a crying baby Courage waving goodbye to a rocket carrying the dog's parents. <laughs> Number 17, Weird Mageddon 3, Take Back the Falls, Gravity Falls. Oh, uh, hey there, kiddo. What's your name? Following two years filled with mystery, suspense, and wonderful characters, Gravity Falls finale brought everything to the table. In order to defeat the dream demon named Bill Cipher, Stan willingly sacrifices the memories created with Mabel and Dipper over the summer. These recollections are recovered once Mabel shows Stan a scrapbook with the trio's many adventures, but the real emotional kicker occurs when the kids finally leave Gravity Falls. In an incredibly touching montage, the episode briefly shows the futures of many of the town's residents, who fans had grown to love over the preceding 40 episodes. Number 16. A regular epic final battle. Regular show. Enough! This battle starts now! Lasting for eight seasons and 261 episodes, regular show's finale needed to be almost perfect to live up to all the hype. If nothing else, the cartoon cannot be criticized for playing it safe. Stuck in a stalemate against anti-Pops and with the whole universe on the line, Pops ultimately concludes the only way to save everyone is to plunge both of them into the sun. The minute you let me go, I'm gonna blast you into nothing. I know, so I'm not going to let go. The battle's aftermath is also a tearjerker, culminating in a 25-year time skip depicting a much older Mordecai and Rigby coming back together for a park reunion. Number 15. Code of Hero – Beast Wars – Transformers Destiny has one great test in store for us all. Has mine already come? And have I failed it? Is a villain truly a villain if he sacrifices himself for the sake of good? After starting as a follower of the evil Predacon leader Megatron, Dinobot rebels against him and ends up with the heroic Maximals, 
Optimus here. What is it, Dinobot? <sighs> Code Red. Situation extreme. However, some still see him as evil, so Dinobot is determined to show them he's no longer the monster they think he is. I am a warrior. Let the battle be joined. He's given that opportunity when he finds himself facing a Predacon onslaught with no backup, and fights to the death to save a group of proto-humans that will eventually give birth to the human race. One lonely turncoat, battling on against impossible odds. I'm almost touched. Dinobot succeeds in thwarting their plans, but is mortally wounded in the process. Unable to help him, the Transformers leave their fallen comrade with one final salute. He lived a warrior and died a hero. Let his spark join the Matrix, the greatest of Cybertron. Number 14, Rose's Scabbard, Steven Universe. Sometimes I wonder if she can see me through your eyes. Everyone grieves the loss of a loved one differently. Pearl, you have to tell me what's wrong. Sometimes you even sound like her. In Pearl's case, she pushes away her friend Steven, the son of a woman she followed, respected, and loved deeply. After accompanying the Crystal Gems to the Strawberry Battlefield, Steven begins to uncover many new truths about his late mother, and starts to see that Pearl never got the closure she needed on their relationship. Why'd she keep so many secrets? She had to, Steven! It's the mark of a great leader. This becomes even clearer when Pearl lashes out after discovering that Rose may have kept secrets from her. She probably just wanted to protect you like everyone else. What do you know? You've never even met her! Denying the fact that anyone was closer to Rose than she was, Pearl runs away upset. But eventually, she realizes there's no better way to stay close to her late friend than by sharing her memories of Rose with Steven. Number 13, Game Over, Reboot. You're all I have left. Now you be careful out there. I don't know what hey, I do. Hey, don't get all mushy on me. You're a commander, remember? Unfortunately for the citizens of Mainframe, these games don't come with extra lives. We've got a problem. The user only has to beat five opponents to win the game. In the midst of a war against the virus Megabyte, the system's user sends a game down onto the city. How many more must suffer before Megabyte is stopped? In an attempt to save that section of the mainframe, Enzo, along with his friend Andrea and loyal dog Frisket, jump into the Mortal Kombat style fighting game to defeat the user. You can't speak in these things! The game proves to be more than the young Guardian and his friends can handle, however. And after Enzo is dealt a crippling blow and loses an eye during the final battle, the story moves to the perspective of those outside the game as they wait for it to end. As the purple GameCube begins to disappear, we hear, for the first time, the most frightening words ever uttered in the series. Game over. Here it goes. Get ready. The user wins. Number 12. Heart of Ice, Batman the Animated Series. Humanity. Compassion. Charity. Where were those pretty words when she needed to hear them? Some Batman villains just want to watch the world burn. Some want to see it freeze. But the reason why might surprise you. Take it easy, man. I got you. Leave him. He should have been more careful. The Dark Knight has a tendency to fight baddies that are victims of circumstance. Take Mary Dahl, for example, whose eternal youth was more curse than blessing. However, Heart of Ice sees the caped crusader face the diabolical Mr. Freeze. Freeze! That's Mr. Freeze to you. The daytime Emmy Award-winning episode follows Batman as he chases this former Gothcorp scientist, whom he discovers is solely seeking revenge on Gothcorp CEO Ferris Boyle for turning him into a monster and essentially sentencing his wife to death. Tonight I mean to pay back the man who ruined my life. Our life. Ultimately, Batman does apprehend the villain and sends him off to Arkham Asylum, where Freeze can only mourn his loved one. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you'll hear me somehow. Number 11, I Remember You, Adventure Time. Stop acting crazy! I just wanna be loved! 
Sometimes it takes a true friend to remind you of who you really are. Do you like me? Of course I do, you old jerk. In a desperate attempt to win the affection of a princess, as is his way, the Ice King seeks out Marceline the Vampire Queen to help him write a song. Wow, I wrote that? Hot stuff. This songwriting session gets all too real when Marceline tries to remind the wizard of his life before he found the magic crown that drove him nuts and erased his memories. This magic keeps me alive, but it's, it's making, making me crazy. crazy. Save me. Saddened by the reality of the situation, Marceline opts to bond with her old friend the only way she can, and we're left watching a touching flashback scene where we see how the two met and became friends in the aftermath of the Mushroom War. Da -da. Number 10. Requiem – Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Master Splinter was not only a wise sensei and mentor to the turtles, he was also their loving father and protector. Giving guidance to your brothers and friends does not come from here. It comes from here. That's why it was absolutely gut-wrenching to see him done away with in such a brutal fashion in the TMNT episode Requiem. Party at the Mutanimals crib, yo! And you can come too, sensei! Hmm. Perhaps I do need to get out of the sewers for a time. When the team is facing off against the mighty Mutanimals, Splinter finds himself in a one-on-one -on -one rooftop battle with a souped-up Super Shredder. It first seems like he stands a chance, having thrown Shredder off the rooftop. Yes! You did it, Sensei! But suddenly, Shredder springs back into action, fatally stabbing Splinter with his razor claws. If that wasn't enough, we're then shown some of the turtles' cherished memories of their dear father. <laughs> There's no amount of anchovies or pizza that can make this episode more bearable. Number 9. Free Churro – Bojack Horseman My mom died and all I got was this free churro. Praised for its honest depiction of depression, substance use disorder, and various other challenging subjects, one of Bojack Horseman's saddest scenes pivots around, of all things, Free Churros and Ted Danson's 90s sitcom Becker. Season 4's Time Arrow suggested that there was more to the protagonist's cold mother than meets the eye, but Beatrice and Bojack remain estranged until the very end. Taking place during Beatrice's apparent funeral, Free Churro frames Bojack's troubled childhood through an ongoing eulogy. Like always, Bojack Horseman finds a way to throw in a few laugh-out-loud moments, but a somber tone is maintained throughout the entire episode. Because now I know I will never have a mother who looks at me from across the room and says, Bojack Horseman, I see you. Number 8. The Tales of Ba Sing Se Avatar The Last Airbender If only I could have helped you. Split into six vignettes, The Tales of Ba Sing Se is often quite lighthearted. Then you get to The Tale of Iroh. This segment mainly consists of Zuko's uncle helping strangers while traveling through Ba Sing Se. All these sweet acts of kindness lead to Iroh leaving town to memorialize the birthday of his late son, who died during a siege prior to the events of the cartoon. There will not be a single dry eye during Iroh's tearful rendition of Leaves from the Vine. Avatar The Last Airbender's vignette closes with a tribute to Iroh's voice actor, Mako Iwamatsu, who passed away a couple of months prior to the episode's airing. Number 7. Have You Seen This Snail? SpongeBob SquarePants Gary Runs Away might not seem like an especially creative premise, but SpongeBob SquarePants produced an absolute gem of an episode. Due to being distracted by a meaningless task, SpongeBob forgets to feed Gary, prompting the snail to pack and leave. Eventually, SpongeBob notices Gary is gone and becomes increasingly distraught at the thought of never seeing the snail again. Come on, Pat, just take these flyers and hand them out. Along with an awesome antagonist in Granny, Have You Seen This Snail contains one of the cartoon's most extraordinary songs in the depressing Gary Come Home. If it was not for the happy ending, Have You Seen This Snail may have taken first place. If only I could hear you meow one last time. Meow. <laughs> Yeah, like that! Number 6. Kenny Dies, South Park Kenny sick? Well, how sick? During the opening five seasons, South Park barely allowed an episode to pass without killing Kenny. 
After rendering death completely meaningless, Season 5's Kenny Dies arrived to tear every fan's heart out. Hospitalized with a terminal illness, Kenny's health rapidly deteriorates, forcing the boys to come to terms with mortality. I know it's tough, okay? I know. But we have to be tough right now. Even though Cartman spends the majority of the episode attempting to find a cure, just as the title prophesized, Kenny eventually dies, and nothing about the moment is treated as a joke. I didn't get to see him. God, I didn't get to say goodbye. The boys grieve, Stan questions God, and Cartman duplicates a Shakey's pizza. Season 15's You're Getting Old sobering ending also merits a special mention. Number 5. A Charlie Brown Christmas. A Charlie Brown Christmas. I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus. Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. What is Christmas all about? The always emo Charlie Brown's depressive state reaches an all-time low in this classic Christmas special as he contemplates why the holiday spirit eludes him. What's the matter, Charlie Brown? Don't you think it's great? It's all wrong. Against his better judgment, Chuck takes Lucy's advice and directs the school's nativity play. But this just makes matters worse when he's met with jeers from his classmates after failing to produce an adequate Christmas tree. What kind of a tree is that? You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? Although Linus's poignant speech cheers him up temporarily, Charlie Brown is in such a deep emotional hole, the only thing that can yank him out of it for good is the sight of his friends showing his little tree some TLC and belting out Christmas carols. It's all so simple. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! Number 4. Life of Brian – Family Guy We're all gonna miss him, Peter. We're all gonna miss him very much. After one of their many trips to the past goes awry, Stewie and Brian agree to destroy their time machine. This time machine has almost killed us a hundred times, Brian. And yesterday was just too close a call. However, fate is cruel, and Stewie immediately regrets this decision when Brian is struck by a car and critically injured, ultimately uttering his last words from the operating table. You, you've given me a wonderful life. I love you all." Reality sets in for Stewie when he realizes that repairing the time machine is impossible, and so the grieving process must begin. Oh dear, Rupert. Without those capacitors, it'll be completely impossible to build a functioning time machine. I guess that means Brian is really gone for good. To help the family cope with their loss, Lois and Peter bring home a new dog named Vinny. But while he is able to emote with Stewie about his lost friend, Vinny can't replace the void left by Brian in the Griffin household. He was my best friend. You're not supposed to lose your best friend at my age. You're not supposed to lose him ever. Number three, Mother Simpson, The Simpsons. Well, how about this? This thing says my mother's still alive! She died when I was a kid! When a show's on as long as The Simpsons, it's bound to turn to the bittersweet every now and then. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry I never come to see you. I'm just not a cemetery person. The moment when Lisa says goodbye to her substitute teacher always gets us sniffling. But it's the mystery you never knew you wanted solved surrounding the whereabouts of Homer's mother that makes our list. I can't believe you're here. Dad always told me you died while I was at the movie. This melancholic episode sees Homer joyfully reunited with his long-lost mother Mona after 27 years. Hey everybody, I got a big surprise for you. Presenting my mother. The two make up for lost time, but it's soon revealed that it's Mona's troubled history with the law that's kept her away so long, and it forces her away again, leaving her son with a hole in his heart. Don't worry, Homer. You'll always be a part of me. At least this time, however, they're able to share a heartfelt goodbye. At least this time I'm awake for your goodbye. Oh, Homer. Number two, Mother's Day, Rugrats. I remember the first time I saw my mom. I think I was in a fish tank or something. Nothing prepares you for the heartbreaking reality of having to reveal this kind of truth to your child. It's all right, Chucky. Don't be scared. The babies celebrate their first Mother's Day experience by crafting presents for their beloved moms. We don't got to present for our mom, Philip. Oh, I got a piece of candy I've been saving. But this only draws attention to the fact that Chucky doesn't have a mother. 
The episode sees him searching for a surrogate mom and thinking about what he's missing. I wish I could remember stuff like that. Don't you remember ever having a mom? Nope. It turns out that, due to Chucky's tender age, his father has withheld information about his son's mother, hoping he could shield him from the pain of missing her. Chucky, this is your body. With support from the other parents, Chaz decides to introduce Chucky to his mother via a box of her belongings. Go ahead, we dare you not to cry. My sweet little Chucky, though I must leave you behind me, this poem will tell you where you always can find me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jurassic Bark Futurama That a boy, Seymour. Right here waiting for me as always. If you're ever given the opportunity to travel a thousand years into the future, consider what you might be leaving behind. I won't be gone long, Seymour. Just wait here till I come back. In pizza delivery boy Philip J. Fry's case, one thing he abandoned was his lucky seven-leaf clover. But fortunately, as we learn in another tear-jerking episode, his nephew put that to good use. Don't you forget about me. But Fry also left his dog Seymour back in the year 2000. His name was Seymour. He was once intimate with the leg of a wandering saxophonist. He had wet dog smell, even when dry, and he was not above chasing the number 29 bus. When he unearths a fossil of his long-lost pal in the 31st century, Fry decides to bring Seymour back as a clone. So will Seymour remember how to sing Walking on Sunshine? E amazingly, yes! However, he ultimately decides against the procedure, thinking that the pooch will have forgotten their friendship. I'll never forget him, but he forgot me a long, long time ago. All it takes is one heart-wrenching flashback for us to learn that he couldn't be further from the truth. What's he so worked up about? He's just upset because our boy's missing. Come on, you overgrown rat. Lead us to Philip. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.